And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. I'm here with a great attitude. The Punk is here with a fantastic attitude. And Podcast Dave is being a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> like a negative Nancy over here. <laughs> Little negative. No. He goes, I got to go. Hey, come on, man. We got to get this going. No, wow. No, no. I'm okay. trying to follow your schedule. You're right, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> trying to follow your schedule. At our age, Dave, we don't have schedules anymore. We just, oh, it's almost schedule. bedtime. It's retired. like, it's what? I'm trying to follow. Oh, seven o'clock okay. on a, on a, or 6.30 on a Saturday night. We're almost Saturday? ready for bed. Done. <laughs> I'm trying to follow your publishing schedule. Uh, How about that? Uh, because we all know that if jo- if it's if the show's not out on time, then Josh is going to get occup- preoccupied. He's not going to be able to read the comments. He's going to be bummed. Yeah, when he has I, to I, read you know how I am about being on time. I'm very fucking <laughs> serious about it. At least one of us is. <laughs> so <she laughs> is. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I have never late. Oh. John's always I'm late. Never late. <laughs> oh, you lying <laughs> son of a bitch! Hey, I'm He's the only. Like- I'm the only person that's uh, ever been a part of the 100 percent of the weighing in shows. I just want that to be clear. 100 <laughs> percent. Turnout 100%. rate for the weighing in show, uh, whereas John uh, and Josh. No, 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 that's not true. Whoa, 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 whoa. I may not, not have filmed. I may not have what? filmed, no. but I have edited every show. I may not have filmed, but no, I have edited no, every no, single no, show. No. Someone's that's, done some work for you before. Uh, I'm, okay, Gian. But someone Gian's done some work. Gian's done all your work. No, he, maybe, ah, maybe you forgot. Work. Maybe no, you he's forgot. he's done. He's done. No, he's been he, on the show to help film it. He's done your job. I'm just saying, John, where is he? 100%, it might be time for, it might be time for some replacement. Yes. <laughs> 100% attendance. I'm just throwing 100%, that 100% there. attendance by day. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, yeah. I can we'll, tell you. We'll give, we'll give him that. But I'll tell you what, he's getting a little saucy. Yeah, you, you know what's funny? is <laughs> his, 100% saucy. my ass. His math is as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shit. at least hindsight's 50 50 on Yes, it is. I'm yes, glad sir, you're finally you catching on. It's taking you fucking six, seven years by now. That's, Jesus. What's that? That's that new that's the, the new math. What's it called? Common core. <laughs> Common core math. Fifty hindsight's fifty Yeah. 50. If you're probably oh, from like man. the Boston area, fucking retard. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're fucking retard. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, hey, let's uh, let's go ahead. Let's uh look, John, the UFC fight was actually a pretty damn card, a pretty damn good card. Up until All the way up to the co-main event and the main event. <laughs> yeah, I know. The whole it's card was hard. fell apart. I was like, okay, this is this card's shaping up. You know, it's going no, well. I'll, there was some really entertaining. I, I, we're going to talk about the beginning fights at the end a little bit. I'll tell you what. There was. A, you take a look at the the guys that opened up the show mm-hmm. for lightweight. Yeah, those are two of the biggest fucking lightweights I've ever seen. Insane. My God. Insane. Unbelievable. And then the I mean uh, the one guy, Oliveira, that one guy, Oliveira, fucking oh, he yeah, looks enormous. That and that's and that's Bantamweight, yeah. right? That was he looked enormous. Yeah. He was enormous. Jeez. Jeez. Uh, I was gonna try to crazy. Yeah, that ju- that's just crazy to me. These guys were these guys were very big, very good. Uh, very I was very impressed though with a lot of these guys. No, no, very there's impressed. A lot, of, a lot of talent out there. Yeah, there's a lot of talent. I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, before we move on, though, guys, make sure you guys subscribe to us. I've noticed that since I started saying it in the beginning, our, our subscribers are growing a lot faster. I guess I just got to be more on tune with that. If I had a producer that reminded me, hey, you know what? You should probably say this in the beginning. We'd probably be growing a little bit faster. But I do want to say Convenient. thank you guys so much for constantly uh, checking in with us, constantly leaving the comments. Make sure you guys leave your comments down below, too, because I do read them. I enjoy reading them and I will sometimes reply and sometimes I just do it to roast you guys because you guys are, can be kind of, it's kind of lame sometimes, but I do it because it's fun. I'm entertained by it. I enjoy uh, getting some feedback, even if it's negative. I don't like the negative comments, but look, everyone's entitled to their opinion and it's an open platform. So we allow the comments. Some, some of these podcasts, they just shut the comments down. You know, um, I want to try to interact with you guys. I know John, he he's like, I'm too busy. I'm, I'm a farmer. I'm busy. I'm a farmer. But, uh, you know, I, I'll see podcast Dave in there scrolling. He's got like 50, like shadow, like type of uh, names that he, he goes by. He <laughs> tries to reply to me a, on a bunch of times. I know who he is. I know how sneaky he is. Yeah. It's, it, 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 <laughs> he's always uh, trying so to nice. like stir up the pot in there. So, you know, I always have to get go hard on the paint on him. But smooth move, Dave. Yeah, but make sure you guys subscribe to us, hit that bell true. and that notifications. That's not true. 
And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. But uh, let's go right into the fight card, man. Jorginho uh, Rosenstruck versus uh, Shamil uh, Gaziv. 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 I mean, John, I expected a little bit more out of Gaziv. I expected him to, uh, I expected his wrestling to be a little bit better, to be honest. Yeah, he he did not. I, you just look, you could tell he was nervous because take a look at the first shot that he took. It was, it wasn't only telegraphed. He sent, he sent snail mail out to Jarzino. <laughs> you know, he also sent an email somehow. It got there eventually. Yeah. The telling, like, hey, this is, I'm going to shoot. It was so slow. It was it was kind of like comical, and it was it's based on nerves. Not you know, not sure what to do, when to do it, as far as you know when he was going to. But look, this is when it comes down to. I God, I hate to say it. You are the person that always talks about you know the lightweight division, yes. you know, welterweight down basically is what you go always. with. Okay. And that's really where the talent is. Are you giving and, and me credit right I've, now? Are you going to give me? You're giving I've me some credit. I've always agreed. I've always, I've always agreed with you. There's more Keep talent. It coming. There's no Keep doubt. Keep it coming, John. Keep it coming. But this is what's wrong with the heavyweight division. This right here, this fight, because look, I really like Jarzino Rosenstruck. I think he's a you know a, a <clears throat> good guy. He goes out, you know, he's tentative anymore though. He's tentative because he's been taken down, and that's how he's lost most of his fights, except for like in Ganu and stuff. But he's so tentative about the takedown. He's got Mo Lal in his corner, so you know Mo's working with him and, and putting him through, you know, different ways of you know stopping the takedowns. But he just doesn't have a confidence in it. And not until he realized, okay, my opponent is tired; he can't take me down now. Then he started opening up. And that's the guy you want to see. That's the guy that, you know, hey, he can put his hands on people. He can hurt people. He can get them out of there. And I looked and it's like, this is what's wrong with the heavyweight division is there's just not enough talent across the board, talent that can do everything like you're talking about. You get so used to watching, you know, the 170, 155s, the 145s, the 135s, the 125s. Where, Josh, you have to be good across the board. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be great. You know, you can have that, you know, element that you're just not as strong, yet, but you still got to have it. And, you know, you can see it, you know, just in this fight right here with Gazeev and the heavyweights, for the most part, very one-dimensional. You know, they, they always have the power to knock each other out, but really one-dimensional in, in their uh, application of the mixed martial arts. And it's very few guys like a Tom Aspinall, like a John Jones, like a Stipe, can do things, you know, well in the wrestling factor, in the stand-up factor, in the submission factor. They have those talents. That's why those guys are at the top. That's why they're so rare. Yeah, I was. It's funny you brought this up because I was going to say the same exact thing, and I, but I was going to take it a different way. If you want to know how weak the heavyweight division is across all promotions, yeah. just understand that Gazeev has one fight in the UFC and he's main event. That yeah. lets you know right there that the heavyweight division is the weakest it's probably ever been in the sport right it now. It almost seems like as the sport grows, we are really seeing a shift of their – and, and look, I understand. You've got the NFL. You've got NBA. You've got all these sports that if you're you know, if you're a 145-pound person, you can't be in the NFL. It just ain't going to happen, okay? You know – so it's not something that's even part of, you know, something you can look at. If you're, you know, if you're, for the most part, if you're not six foot, you know, five, mm -hmm. you ain't going to the NBA. Okay. Cause those guys are huge and stuff. So it, you can look and say, it's understandable. Heavyweights have the ability to do other sports where sometimes the lighter weight guys don't, you know, fighting is what they have. You know, you can be a, Look, you can be a freaking 125 pound flyweight in the UFC, or you can be a jockey. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 125 pounds. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna be doing any other yeah. real you know sports that are making money and stuff. So, you know, you look at it, and you go, ah, man, it's just there is an absolute, you know, I don't I don't know how to say it. It's just the talent of just what the guys are doing falls off so much. Yeah. And you can see it by like, like, like what you were saying about, you know, the, the preliminaries in the first couple of fights, 
you know, on the main card, they were good. And there was a lot of stuff going on. And those guys were doing a lot of different techniques and they were just going after it. And you saw when it got to the heavier guys, it slowed down. Oh, yeah. And the amount of actual, you know, martial arts talent that you saw was not as, you know, look, it's big, mm -hmm. but not as good as what we had seen earlier in the night. Yeah, I, I just look at, when you take a look at, let's just, I'm going to use Ryan Bader, I'm going to use Hennen uh, Fajeda, I'm going to use Goldsoft from PFL and Bellator, you know, um, Litton Vassell, I'm going to use those guys as well, but also two into the heavyweight division, you have John Jones, you got Cyril Gone, you've got Tom Aspinall, below those three, yeah. I mean, and then look, well, and I'm going to even take a little shot, I'm not going to take a shot at, at the guys over at PFL and Bellator, but... Like Brian's forty years old, yeah. and he's on his way out. And he, he and if you talk sure. to him, he's very he's had a hell of a he's career. very open about it. He's like, look, I don't know how many I have left. He's like, but I know it's not a lot, you yeah. know. And he's very open about it. And um, with Hennen, like he's a big monster of a guy, you know, six what six eight, you know, he's got fast hands. He's a little bit younger. I think he's thirty three, you know. But still, he's got a little bit left in the tank. But no wrestling yeah. to 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 talk of, no wrestling. No. You know, you mix him with a Tom Aspinall, and you know it could be a it could be a very long night for Henna Fajeda. I mean, but Henna could also knock him out. Knock yeah, him out. But this is, I'm going to get in. I guess I'm not, I'm not trying to cross promote guys. I'm not trying to do that. What I'm trying to say is that if I was to take all the heavyweights in from one championship, all the heavyweights from PFL and Bellator, and all the heavyweights from the UFC, you'd have one top ten. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> You, well, okay. Look, I don't even know let, if you'd have a top right fifteen, there. John. Let's stop it right there because see, I think one championship kind of gives you an idea of what we're talking about because Malkin mm -hmm. just won their middleweight, or he either won the middleweight or the light heavyweight. I think it was the middleweight because he beat DeRitter mm -hmm. just two days ago, right? Malkin is their heavyweight champion. He's their light heavyweight champion, and now he's their middleweight champion, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he's not a big guy, but he's got a lot of talent as far as he throws his hands hard. He's tough as hell to take down. And you just take a look, but it's the lighter weight guy. Look at middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight champion. Yeah. And it's telling you, it's like, you know, it's because he's got more tools that he uses in the fight than the heavy guys. You know, and he's got a gas tank and he, he keeps coming at him and he exhausts him and stuff. And then, you know, he gets with Deritter, who look, Deritter's good. He's a phenomenal submission guy, but Malkin's too strong. Yeah. Malkin's got too much power. So, I mean, I, I just look at it. And this, it's just the one that, because I was looking at the, you know, they're, they're bumping up their things and they've got Tai Tuivasa, who I love to watch. Yes. It's because he's fun. Okay. He's just a fun guy to watch and stuff. But Ty is limited. Let's just be honest. He is a he's a brawler. He's a street fighter. His you know ground game sometimes he'll take it to the ground, but you know that's just not his thing. He's going up against Marcin Tabura. That's going to be a, that's the main event coming up in one of the shows two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's almost like this fight. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit better. I think. I think. Yeah, because you know, you know Ty's going to go out on his shield. Yes. Ty's going to do whatever it takes to try to get that thing out of there. Yeah, and so Ty Burr is tough. Yeah, he is. He, you, know, you know, he's been put away, but man, he he'll fight his ass yeah. off. But again, limited yeah. comparatively, yeah. and it's just just that point of there's just not that many, yeah. you know. Well, Dave, pull pull up the um, well, just well rounded heavyweights. It's just not pull up there. the UFC, yeah, you go the heavyweight division in the UFC. So I'm gonna say yeah, John Jones, Tom Aspinall, Cyril Gon, Pavlovich. And then a pretty much even, even Pav Pavlovich, yeah, got he power. Does. He's there. I, I put him there. I, I forgot about him to be honest, off the top of my head. So the four guys right there. Steep A is on his way out, and don't, I'm not trying to knock Steep A at all. He's he's one of the greatest, if no. not the greatest. Dude, you know, Steep A, I would not, he's awesome. Yes, but he's just old. Yes, I agree. I mean, there comes that point yep. where the skills start to. It's not his fault that the still skills start to. And then I look at the guys. Curtis Blade. He's in that mix. He'd be in the top ten if I was to put all the weight, all the all the heavyweights together into one. He'd be in the top ten because yep. he can wrestle. That's yeah, why. but his chin is now. I get it, but he can wrestle. Thin. He can wrestle. Fuck himself into the top ten for sure. Okay, yeah. uh, Volkov just hard to deal with, no. you know. But I wouldn't say no. I think a lot of the guys that would come over from the from Bellator from PFL would be able to get him out. 
Um, and then uh, actually beyond that, I really can't say there'd be, I, I'm, I'm still well, on the fence about Jailton Almeida. He's there. He's good, well, but his wrestling is okay. Not, he's just, he's phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Positionally, yes. phenomenal. But if you are getting mount on a guy for five rounds yeah. and you don't finish that fight, yeah, something's wrong. I agree. Something's wrong. You know, and then if I was to look at look, pull up uh, Bellator. I, and look, I can just probably tell you the guys off the top of my head. Now you've got Nemkov there, so I put Nemkov, Bader. Uh, but Nemkov can do it yes, all. Nemkov. That's one of the yes, things. Yes, Nemkov, Bader, Linton Vassell. That might be it. Moldovsky. I'll put Moldovsky in the mix. Moldovsky's good. Yeah, so you have another four yeah. guys there. So that's only eight guys right now that we have in a top 10 heavyweights across the board. And then I'll put Goldsoft and Hennen Fajeda in the top in the top two. You know, and I might even put Capaloza at the very end, number 10, somewhere in there. But then it's a toss-up with Capaloza and uh, and like uh, Volkov or Capaloza. It's like a toss-up between those guys. So the number 10 spot's like kind of up for grabs. Like yeah. out of all the promotions, you really only have 10 top heavyweights. And it's not a knock on any of them at all. It's not a knock. You just, you don't have enough of them. There's just not enough. And it's funny because when you brought up baseball, you brought up football. And it's like, I remember, look, I've got a Hank, I've got a signed Hank Aaron's jersey here. And it's mm -hmm. one that he actually wore in a game. I've got the photos of it and everything like that. It hangs up in my studio here. Guess what? That jersey probably wouldn't even fit me. That's how small he was. <laughs> Like he was yeah. not a big guy, you know, and no, but, but baseball players ended up being big. Aaron judge right now is six, six, I believe. Oh no, six, six, seven. somewhere in there. Okay. So yeah. he's, he's enormous. There's other guys that are, you yeah. know, uh, they're just, these baseball players well, are at, a lot bigger. I mean, pe people are going to talk about, you know, oh, steroids and stuff, but you know, Mark McGuire was a, was a big yeah. guy, you know, was, you know, at one point, you know, talking about pitchers, Roger Clemens. Yep. You know, I went and just, dude, Roger Clemens. Is Randy a big Johnson man. was what, 6'8? Randy Johnson was snow. Damn. Can you pull up Randy Johnson I, there? Baseball I, player. I believe 6'8 or 6'9. You're right. Yeah, he was tall. He might be taller than that. That's why I was like 6'10. Six, yeah. yeah, he was taller than that. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the big unit. Uh, you know, but you got all these guys, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, you got all uh, the, you have, what was his name? Uh, the Big Hurt. Who they call the Big Hurt? Uh, Frank Thomas. He was, was a, yeah, he was a big guy too. Big dude. He was a big guy. So look, and that, those are more like, I would say more genetics. Those guys were pretty big, like height wise, frame wise. Those guys were big. Mark, but there's a lot of them in baseball. There is now. now. There is a lot of them in baseball. There's a now. lot of them. I mean, you'll get some guys that, you know, there's, they're smaller athletes, mm -hmm. but they're so talented that they can make it. But it's not easy compared, you know, when you're going up against these monsters all the time. You know what's funny though about those other sports is that, which is what we don't get really, in, in in we still get it a little bit, is in the sport of fighting. There's not as much politics as there is in football and baseball. And I mean, I know kid, I know guys that that were. They just weren't supposed to be drafted. They weren't supposed to be good and just found their way onto a team. And next thing you know, they're fucking superstars. And yeah. Because if they didn't get this one opportunity, this one chance, they were better than all the others. And I know guys that were better than these guys. I was watching them chew up these guys, these 49ers at practice. They just never got the opportunity. The coach didn't like them or something. They rubbed the coach the wrong way. They just didn't have the yeah. body frame that the coach was looking for. They didn't like their work ethic in the fit in the, in the, it could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of and things. And I've just seen it happen. I mean, look, we talked about uh, Biagio Ali Walsh playing football, and he's just like, look, I got, I got, you know, I went to a D1 school my first year, and as soon as I got there, the head coach got fired. And then the new coach came in and brought his guys over, how, like, Deion Sanders brought his guys over from Jackson University. He's like, and now my spot was not available anymore because he brought his own guys. He's like, so then I transferred to UNLV and then it just didn't work out. I got injured and it was like all this thing. And so it happens. You got to have, you got to have the luck of the fall. But I think with the, with the way the sports are going, the heavier you are, the bigger body frames you are, all of those things, that's more of your opportunity. And then you don't have that in fighting. Those guys are thinking to themselves, I can make twice as much money and the opportunity and chance, especially now in college. With the NIL deals, NIL, like yeah. if I can go and have somewhat of a name, I can make two fifty, five hundred thousand dollars, you know, for the season. 
Oh, and yeah. an opportunity. And I also know a buddy who's, who's got, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there's this new thing going around. Uh, I don't know how new it is. I mean, I've, I've, I've only just recently heard of it myself. Whereas big money people now, what they're doing is how you, how you would see ever the movie, the blind side. I know, I know that's not what yeah. happened. Okay. But what they're doing is they are basically having these young athletes at a young age in high school and then going into college, sign contracts with them saying, Hey, I will fund. Oh, yeah, they pay them. They pay them a certain amount, and I'll fund all of I'll your. I'll fund all of your everything. training, all of your everything, and I get fifty yep. percent of your contract when you sign to the NFL to the league. Yep, that's f- fucking robbery. Like I know that, but the thing is, though, that is that's politic and right there at its finest because those big money yep. people are putting money into the NFL teams and just making sure that their player gets there. That that's gonna fuck up the. That's gonna start fucking up the sports. No, but then again, John, we won't know. We won't know. You want to know why? Because yeah. then I say this about the I say this about UFC as well as I say about the NFL. I don't know if there's a better marketing uh, program out there, a better marketing. What? How, how do I say with the with with the PR business? No one has yeah. a better PR than the NFL the and the UFC. The I two agree. of them are like this. They are freaking the two of the they're best on. in the world. I, they're the two best. Oh, yeah. How many? I mean, how many times? How many times can someone say this is possibly the best fight card ever? And people, people <laughs> slurp that go, shit up like they really believe it. I know it. they do. They're like, I just listened to them tell me that two ninety nine is the best <laughs> fight card ever, and I'm like, wait, three hundred's coming. Just, you know that, right? <laughs> hold it. You just said the two ninety eight one, but now you're gonna have three hundred. I think they're gonna say it's just it's part of the marketing. Absolutely, and people buy into it. They believe it. That's okay. Absolutely. It might be the greatest card ever. You never know until it's over. Yeah, it, it might. It actually might. It's a pretty damn good card. It's a good, it's card. A good card. I like 300, though. Everyone's dogging on 300, but I really enjoy 300. No, you cannot dog. I, on I that can't card. believe people are dogging on it, John. I love yeah. 300. I'm like, this is, okay. this is this like is my people, dream card, honestly. I got to be honest with you. It's a great card. People, people start getting so pathetically uh, bitchy about things that you look and you go, you're going to complain about who's on that card? Come on. I'm just being honest. You, okay. UFC fans, if you guys are complaining about that card, you guys are entitled. Bottom line. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you true. guys, yeah. you guys are you guys are UFC fan privileged. Okay? Do you guys understand <laughs> that the, part of the argument there though is that Dana promised yeah. like the sickest card ever and all that it, stuff? It, it, look, Dave, it, it's okay. a pretty sick card, Hold Dave. On. Do me a favor. Yep. Dave, while while we're talking here, I want you mm. to go and pull up a card that has as many ex former or current champions, or anything that compares to what that yeah, card has. But he did. He was quoted. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, hold on. He was quoted as saying the main event was going to be the best thing you've ever seen in your life. So just to, just like thrown out there. It was, yeah. Well, he, he, and people he, are mad about the main a, event. Look, I, I get everyone saying that I'm a Dana hater, which I'm not a Dana hater. I just tell the truth. But there's times when Dana does things good, and there's times when you know he. I look and I go, that's not the right way of doing it, but. He was trying, man. He was going after everything he could. It just all got to the point. It didn't work out. That's that's yeah. just the world of fighting. But, There's times people are ready to fight. Sometimes they're not. I, I know we're getting way off topic because we're supposed to be talking about the Boy, fight card. We? But look, let's let's <laughs> look. I'm looking at 300 right now. Alex Paha and Jamal Hill. Okay, knockout. Great. Okay, great Wei Li Zhang versus Yang. Uh, how do you say her last name? Zhang Zhang Yan Zhang Zhang. Jounin. Yeah, so that could probably be a Jounin. finish. Jounin. I think that's going to end up being a finish because Whaley just fights like yep. a dog, and Jan's going to try to keep this thing on the feet. Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, potential for fight of the year. Okay, not a fight that a lot of people think should actually happen. Though. Exactly, just Habib honest. just said the same thing. Charles Oliveira and Armand Sarukian, either knockout or, or submission is going to happen. Unbelievable matchup, though. Yuri Prochaskis versus Rakic. Knockout or finish is going to happen, or just the sloppiest fight you're ever going to see. It's going to still be one of the best fights probably of the year. Okay. Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling. A submission or a knockout? And and the former champ coming up to 145 for his first fight. I'm sorry, but I'm yep. okay with this. I like this. Hello? Bo Nickel is probably the the probably the worst card on this worst fight on this card is this fight. And it's matchup. It's the matchup, matchup, not the worst fight. Yeah. Cody and Brundage. Like Cody Brundage is a wrestler, so I understand what they're trying yep. to do. But but Bo but if Bo special. keeps himself, if he doesn't keep himself on uh, task, if he doesn't stay loyal to his defense yeah. of the submissions, he could end up getting arm and guillotine choked. 
He could end up putting his head in the wrong spot and getting choked, or he could just keep this thing on the feet. And where I think he may have more success is on the feet with Cody Brundage. Different and figure. Okay, look at look at the fight. That's the fight that supposedly is going to start this card off. Yeah, I, and but Devis has got so much hype around him. No, no, oh, no. Cody no. Bryant, oh, saying, Cody uh, Garbrandt and Devis Cody Figueredo. Garbrandt versus Devinson Figueredo is the fight that yeah. supposedly is the first fight of the night. Come on. Yeah. On the main card? I, no, he no, said no, on no. the prelims. That's, the that's what Dana had said. He goes, that's, that's, a, that's the first a fight on the prelims. Fight. Yeah, and then now you got Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. First fight Which in is the UFC. Be a great fight. Fighting Holly Holm. Very big fight. I, Diego, Lo- Diego Lopes, I'm sorry, but there's so much hype around him. How could you not want to see this kid fight? He's good. He's good. And I think he, I think he, I think he molly wops, uh, Yusef. I think he just beats him everywhere. I think, uh, Sadiq's going to give him a hard time on the feet a little bit in the beginning with Sadiq's the speed, got power. With the power and a little bit of the speed. Got power. But Diego is just a, all around a better fighter, you know? And then I'm sorry, but I'm, uh, Marina Rodriguez and Jessica Andrade. Marina should beat her size wise, physical strength, all those things to be able to pull. Sniper. Sniper. I think Marina should beat her. But Jessica yeah. is, I think, finally settled into the fact that she's a straw weight fighter. She's going to stay there, is what she says. Now, let's go to Bobby Green and Jim Miller. I'm sorry, but I, I'm, Great I'm old as fuck. So, of course, I, I love, love that fight. I love that fight. <laughs> I love Bobby Green. I fought Bobby Green. We had him on the podcast. And I love Jim Miller. How do you not like the guy? The guy's a fucking legend, man. He's got the most fights in UFC. There's not one fight on here. I'm like, man, I wish that fucking fight wasn't on there. That's That's it. It. I, I can't. There's not, like, I don't like It's perfect. This is a perfect card. It's from beginning to end a great card. People need to stop being so privileged. Okay, stop with their entitlement. Stop fucking, stop being so Dana White privileged or so UFC privileged. You guys got to stop. All right, stop it. All right, let's get let's get back to Mister Rosenstruck versus Gaz, Gazi. I, I the first two rounds, I guess you could go, give them to Shamil Gazeev, but it was obvious that from that point, mentally, you could see it when he went to the corner and he's hanging there. He's done. Mm-hmm. He's done, and 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 Jarzinho just started to pick it up a little bit, started coming forward a little bit more. He was circling more than coming forward, but at least he did come forward. Used the jab; the jab was the big weapon, you know, and it was effective, you know. And it, it kept catching Gazeev just throughout the third and then the fourth round. And look at when a guy goes to this corner and sits not on the stool, sits on the ground. It's a clue. It's a clue. You could see it. He he did. He was arguing with his cornerman. He wanted the fight to get stopped. They wanted him to go back out there. He wasn't ready for a five round fight in that fashion. And uh, John, what nice win? One fight nice in win the by, UFC. By, 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 what's one that? fight in the UFC, and he's main event. Oh, I know. I, know. I mean that. that I can't. And there was a big step up between Boudet oh, yeah. and. You know, Rosenstruck. That's a big step up too. I I, I say nothing bad against because he, you know, he's a big big guy, but he is uh, he's plotting. Mm-hmm. He's not super athletic. Yeah. You know, and <clears throat> with that, you can take a look at the top guys, and you know, you can fast forward two years. How does Gazeev beat Tom Aspinall? But I mean, like you don't know what he, what changes he can make, but I don't see any way right now. I, I don't even see him. I don't see him getting out of the first round. Yep. Ain't happening. No. So. No, I get it. I understand. I, I, I'm not trying to knock on either one of the guys. Jorginho is, no, I, I is thought, a great look, fighter. You, you got to give it to Jorginho. Yeah. He hung in there. He weathered the, the takedown. He stopped every other takedown attempt that there was. And then he started picking up the pace of his output because he was more confident in the fact that he wasn't going to yeah. get taken down because uh, <clears throat> he could stop it. I agree. But nice win. But nice win by Jersey. I don't want to take anything away from him. He did a great job. Mm-hmm. And he just needs to he needs to fight like he was fighting in the fourth round. That's the fight yeah. that he needs when he goes out. I agree. I think I, I almost felt like he <clears throat> was trying to see if he can go a hard five rounds. I think I think look heavyweights I they feel like they always have it in the back of their head. Unless you're a John Jones or unless you're a Cyril Gaon, unless you're like a, a Tom Aspinall, they're just, they feel like they're just built differently. These guys, those guys, they have more of a, they actually, their, their body fits a heavyweight body. These guys, 
they got a little extra around the waist. They're, they, they're built a little bit differently. Their legs are a little, I don't know what it is. They just don't look like they are the, 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 the one that goes out and runs miles and puts the, you know, and it's nothing against them. It's just the way their body is built. <clears throat> and yeah. I, I would have said the same thing about my, one of my former teammates, Paul Bonatello. It looked like he never fucking ran, but I know he did. He's a burrito. I used to run him all the time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, dude, he, he was just round. He was just the way he was built, you know? His chest and his, his, his entire upper body was just barrel chested. Structure, always barrel, had good yeah. cardio. Always threw up before every fight. Fast hands. <laughs> you know, he even, he's even got a head kick dude, knockout. He had a great jab. Oh, it was fantastic. Dude, he had a, he had a great jab. Yeah, a good, a good jab and a good uppercut. Yep. Yeah, he had a good jab and a good uppercut because he knew everyone tried to take him down. And he had fast, he had fast hands. You know, yes, not did. a lot of power, but fast hands. And I, I cornered him for, I cornered him a bunch of times. But one of the times I quartered him was uh, he had a head kick knockout in Hawaii. Yep, I would like to take full com full. Uh, I would. I would that. like to. I'd like to have a picture of Paul getting his foot he up did. that high. He did. He <laughs> did. Square in the dome. Boom. Yeah, Something right, Montana. I think it was the guy's name. Something Montana. Anyways, and he ended up getting a head kick knockout. Anyways, uh, all right. Let's go ahead to the go to go to the K- uh, co-main event. All right, we had Vitor Petrino taking on Tyson Pedro. This one started slow, and it, you know, obviously Tyson Pedro knew that you know he was thinking about this being his last fight going in. Petrino did not; uh, he ne- he never really pushed in the fight until the third round. When the third round happened, he just came out and started pushing the fight, going after him, and uh, putting a ton of pressure on him. That was the Petrino that we've seen in the past. We seen him have that kind of pressure. He got, you know, in the very first time he was in the UFC, he got tired, but he's shown that he can uh, actually have a good gas tank. The dude is strong as hell. Mm. He is built like, you know, a Greek god. He picked Tyson Pedro up at times when you look and you go, as hips are out, doesn't matter. Yeah. He just he, he just muscles him right up in the air and slams him down and stuff. But a nice win for uh, for Petrino, and I'm sorry to see Tyson Pedro go. He didn't have that long of a career, but always, you know, always a good guy. Always a really nice guy. I don't know if you ever got to meet him, but he's a super nice guy. I never did get to meet him. Um, I, he was kind of cursed with some injuries, I believe. Yeah. He was out for a bit. And that's those are some of the most frustrating times to try to get yourself back into it because you go through the injury, and then as soon as you start to feel good, you go back into training, and you think you can jump back into training like you were before you got injured. And that's what leads to more injuries. And then it's just yeah. a snowball effect. It continues to happen over and over. And I was a victim of that because I thought, oh, I could just do what I was doing before I got hurt because I felt so great. And I just kind of always still ran, still train a little bit. I'm still in good shape. I can do this. And and it's not, it's your body just can't do it. Your brain That's tells you you can do it, but your body just can't. And so I understand. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, Jamie Pickett also retired tonight. And yeah. so those are things that come up based off in him. He's like, look, I want to be able to play with my daughter and I want to be able to have fun with my kids. And look, there's no one that understands more than that than me. Totally and uh, it's something that really is a lot of these fighters. I wish that a lot of them would spread this knowledge to Tony Ferguson. So, <clears throat> but Vitor Petrito, <clears throat> good win. I mean, obviously you want more out of it. Co-main event. This is your time to shine. This is your moment and opportunity. Chael Sonnen talks about this all the time. Dude, if you get an opportunity like being the co-main event or the main event and you get the mic at the end, you should be calling somebody out. You should be making a fuss. He did. You should be talking about knocking dudes he out. He did. But you've got to back it up with the fighting, though. That's like you, you've got to, you know. It's, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so, well, I mean, he, with the third round, he did. But, John, there's a lot of hype around Mohamed Mokaya versus Alex Perez. There's a lot of hype around him potentially being next in line for a title shot. You and I were texting back and forth. You're shaking your head no right now. Tell me what you saw. Tell me why you're shaking your head no. Well, let's just be honest. When you're looking at a guy that's going to be fighting the guys like Pantoja and Brandon Moreno and a right. Brandon Royval, you've got to be able to do the same things throughout every round. And you don't you don't have rounds where you're, uh, you know, look at Alex Perez took over in the third round. You know, Mokayev has got good wrestling and stuff, but he had some problems with the wrestling against Perez. And and the blueprint is out there. You want to beat Alex Perez, take him down to the ground. Yeah. And people have, and they've been very successful with it. I'm not saying Alex Perez has not gotten better with his wrestling he has. 
but you could see where Mokayev at times was struggling in the fight. He won the first round, he won the second, but in the third round, you don't let you don't let someone like Alex Perez back in the fight. You've got to you know continue to yeah. step on the gas and put him away. And if you can't do that with Alex Perez at this point, then you're going to have a real problem doing it with guys that are used to fighting in a five round fight, guys that are used to having you know some adversity in the fight and coming back. <clears throat> I think he just needs a couple more fights. Alex Perez, John, I couldn't have been more impressed with than anybody yeah. probably on this card with his takedown defense. Holy yeah. shit. There was transition after transition after. Tra I, I felt like I was watching a fucking All-American at moments. <laughs> he had some great scrambles. There were some moments where he, he got a little uh, complacent and he got taken down and was able to try to work yeah. his way back up and got put on bottom. I understand that. It happens to the best of us. But this guy was hitting so many. He switches. He went from, from the single leg defense with the wizard back into defending the double leg, shoving the head between the legs, back to wizarding the other side, and then getting up on then uh, Mokayev came up on a body lock, and he turned and spun for double unders or for over under for unders. Yeah. I was like, holy yeah. shit! All yeah. in one sequence. He really, he really looked. I mean, that's why I said, look, the blueprint is there. You want to beat the guy? This is what you do. Boy, his wrestling looked really good. He looked good, but you know what happens when you focus so much on your wrestling? It takes it yeah, starts taking away from your stand up. And he didn't throw as much. Because when you get in the camp, your whole goal was to not get taken down. And then it takes away from what you've been doing to got, that got you to the big dance. It got you in the top 10 rankings. And that is letting your hands fly, letting the combinations go. And I understand. I get it. When you're fighting someone who is that way in the wrestling department in Mokayev, you've got to make sure that you are on point. And he was on point. I gave a speech yeah. about Arnold Allen when he fought uh, Ovalev. Uh, Ivalev or whatever. Uh, Ivalon, yeah, when he fought Ivalon. him. I said, buddy, you just got to believe in what your defense is because, man, he could scramble. He had a great Grammy role. He had some great positioning. Like, he was real good, you know, and Arnold Allen was. He just doesn't believe, didn't believe in it, kept getting so worried about being taken out. I saw the beginning features of that in Alex Perez in the first round and a half. And as he started realizing that Mokai was getting tired – and it wasn't coming out as, as easy. And his shots were basically him just dropping to his butt and waiting for Perez to step in on a shot so he could grab a leg and then wrestle him from there. Look, I've said this, and I know you've probably heard a lot of top levers wrestlers. And if you've ever been coached by a wrestler uh, at a high level, the first thing they'll tell you is the wrestling doesn't even start until you get in on the leg. Just because I lowered my level and I shot in, I, I hit deep in your hips. The wrestling That's hasn't right. even started. Until I got on, the, got in that deep, and that's what I saw. I saw that from Umar Namagomedov. I saw that from Okayev. I saw that from those guys. Those guys were like, "Okay, the wrestling didn't even start until I got in deep on the leg. Now I'm ready to go." And uh, Mokayev, to me, and, and people can say what they want. I just feel like I know he's undefeated. I know he's got some good wins. He's not ready for a title shot. Not yet. No, he's not ready. I agree. He needs another fight. If I'm Dana White, I'm sitting up there going, "You look tired in the third round. You lost the third round." I thought, and then on top yep. of that, when you fight somebody like a Pantoja, or you fight someone like a Brandon Moreno, who they're not even warmed up until the third round. They're they're, they're just getting started. Like they yep. they've they've done a 45 minute long workout in the back, you know, and they're still not warmed up until round two. And so if I'm if I'm in the, if I'm in the back going uh, Dana White and I'm going hey man what do you think is he going to be next I'm like nah he's going to need some more time he's going to need some more yeah. time I mean I, there's I there's reason to also hold it out and drag it out because from what I saw tonight one or two shots don't go his way and he's going to be in some trouble and and I'm going to compare somebody to I'm going to compare Aldo to somebody that is the 125 pound champ right now in Pantoja don't they feel like they have a little similarity. The ability to stop takedowns, the aggressiveness, the nasty kicks, everything they throw is with bad intentions. I look at Jose Aldo and I look at uh, Pantoja and I'm like, they're kind of the same fighter. They kind of remind <laughs> me a little bit of each other. Yeah. Just that nastiness about them. They seem very nice outside the cage, but when they get in there, everything is bad intentions, John. Yeah. And when I saw Adam Mokayev tonight, I don't know if he's ready for that type of bad intentions. You know, it's funny because... It I was really looking forward to seeing where Mokayev was at, but it was the Steve Ursig, and I'm skipping Umar right mm -hmm. now, but the Steve Ursig versus Matt Schnell fight 
that I was like yeah. super impressed. Yep. You know, we talked about Ersic and hey, he's good, you know, and you know, not too sure how hard he hits or anything. Guess what? He just proved that yeah. one. Man, because he took the other part is he took a couple yeah. big shots in that. And he, you want to talk about a guy that really impressed in the flyweight division and moving up? That's the guy. Yeah. And then the the call out that he made wasn't bad. Who did he call out? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Brandon Moreno. Oh, perfect call out. Perfect call. I did. I actually <laughs> did hear that. Sorry, forgot. CT. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> wow. But it's a good call out. That's a great call out. I'm, just, that, that, that's getting kind of stiff. Ah, I mean, look, it, tough he believes in himself. I mean, he had to convince his yep. dad that he was a tough kid, from what I understand. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah. and remember when I was, we talked about this on Tuesday when I talked about this fight. I said, look, Matt Snow is someone who is aggressive. He throws a little wild. He gets a little, he leaves himself out of position a little bit. Urseg is someone who's very true to his stand up. He's very defensive fighter, stays long, stays aggressive, very on point, very strict with his discipline. He stays tight with his combinations and everything, and that's exactly what won him the fight. The one time he got yeah. out of that positioning, he got clipped with a big shot by Matt Snow, I think, at the end of the first, from three yep. quarters of the way through the first. And yeah. it was like, oh, a reality check. Okay, let's get back to what I was doing. And <laughs> I, th I thought he fought good. I thought he fought a great fight. The kid's got something. He's got something. And I'm excited to see what, where he goes from here. Because I remember watching his, one of his last fights. And I thought I actually thought he lost. I think it was a close fight, though. But I thought he lost. And but then I remember seeing that my two Ursig, Steve Ursig, not Alex Perez. Come on, buddy. I think, I think he only his last fight was his first fight. Was it his first fight? I believe. No, he's got three fights. I believe. Does he have three? Yeah, I think he's got. Jeez, come on, buddy. My, uh, it's not <laughs> right working. there. My button's not working on that. No, your, fucking... your button's yeah. not working. Is that what she tells you? There we go. There. We go. <laughs> like, What's wrong? Your button's not working. Yeah, three. He's got three fights. Yeah, he's got three. But Devorik. it was the. Uh, I want to say it was the Dvorak fight. Uh, maybe I don't know. Anyways, there was one of the fights and one of the UFC fights. I thought it was like it was a close fight. He probably could have done more. I think. And I remember thinking to myself, how good he was technically. Just when you get guys like that, you've got to get them out of position. And he started to get out of position a little bit as the fight went on. And, um, and that's when I was like, okay, that's where he'll get exp uh, someone to exploit him later on. But he's got something, man. He really does. I'm looking yeah, forward to seeing his progression as he gets into this a little bit higher. But now he's in the top 10. You're in the top oh, yeah. 10 in the flyweight division. And uh, yeah. it's only going to get tougher from here. But he's got something. I'm looking forward to that. Going back up to the fight we didn't talk about, Umar Nurmagomedov taking on Bexit Almakan. Man, Almakan, tough dude. He took some big shots in that. He landed that uh, big right hand. It bounced off the dome of uh, Umar, but it rattled him. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, it absolutely hurt him. He is training took over. He gets into, you know, the take, looking for the takedown. He finally gets it uh, when he got it. You got to be impressed with oh. his ability to turn the coins beautifully down. <laughs> it was just beautiful. I want, I want people to understand. I've known this kid since he was 19 years old with Umar, and he had little to no wrestling. It was not the wrestling you just saw tonight. What I saw tonight no. was how fast he snatched the single legs and how fast he dumped. And any high school wrestling coach will tell you, okay, it's about speed of finish. The wrestling doesn't start until you get in, but as soon as you snatch that leg, you've got to finish right away. You can't be hanging out on the single leg and just trying to like dump him, trying to lift it, trying to tee top, tree top it. You've got to hit it and dump it. And he, that's, he did that every single time and he did it beautifully. And when he got rocked and he got in deep on the single and he was able to kind of like, like, uh, DC was saying, he instead of poking his head out on the high crotch side and kind of going to the back, he wasn't able to do that. So he just took his head across on the far side it, and yeah. sat him to his hip. Beautifully done. Nicely done, especially when you're in trouble. It's hard to get your That's brain to point. really work and figure out yeah. what you're, where you're at and what you're doing underneath but somebody. It was what he did that told me at the time when he did it that I go, no, he's there. Oh, yeah. Because you, you don't pull off what he did as far as crossing his head over to the other side in a wrestling move like that if you're hurt. You're just not going to do it. You're going to start to turn with your head, trying to push – did a beautiful job. That's what told told you he was back, but he did get hurt. And uh, but from that point, let's be honest, he just put on yeah. a clinic as far as takedown positioning. Yeah. You know, 
the ground and pound when he started doing it, he he did lose position off of he started getting a little sloppy with that ground and pound when he was posted up and just throwing big winging shots. You throw winging shots, it takes your balance off, and his opponent took advantage of that one time. Basically, he just yeah. stood up, boom, and you can do that when someone is, you know, trying to land big shots and they can, they miss. Well, a lot a lot of the problem with his not just his style, like with with some karate style stances, right? Like Stephen Thompson with Umar's with with uh, Usman Nurmagomedov as well. That style of stand up, you can sometimes leave yourself out of position when you try to snap the kick up to the top. When you try to like snap the kick and then throw the straight left or whatever, straight right, right after it, you can leave yourself out of position because you're kind of reaching because you're trying to follow it up after a long kick. So sometimes people will go, they'll go punch first. And as the opponent backs away, they'll go kick. When this type of situation, they use their kick as a jab. They use it as a range finder. They kick and then they try to step in after that to close the distance to throw the punch. Now you've got to jump in and leave yourself sometimes out of position and that's exactly what happened is he left himself out a little bit out of position and he had to duck down and ran right into a, a shot into the temple. I am going to say this because I said the same thing about Mokayev and I feel like I need to be a, a hundred percent honest with you guys. You guys know I'm a homer for my boys. Okay. Is that Umar, no matter how much I believe in, he, I believe that he's going to be champion one day. He needs another fight before he tries to get a title shot. I need to see, I need, and can you pull up the, the weight classes there? He called out Corey. I think Sanhagen. it's a great, I think it's a great fight. I think it's a perfect fight for him. Corey's nasty on the feet. Corey's got good jujitsu. I think that's a perfect fight for him. I'd like to see him fight like a Peter Yawn, and I know Peter's coming up here pretty soon, but I'd like to see him fight like a Peter Yawn or a Corey Sanhagen first. Aljo's out of there now. He's up to 145. He's gone. Okay. Um, I think I think that's perfect. And then if you have, you know, you got Dick of Devison Figueredo, you got Cody Garbrot that are kind of where's Cody at? Cody's in that mix somewhere. Uh, cool. no, I think Cody's Cody got right okay. no. Oh, he's not in there. He switched out. Yeah, he switched to the one twenty five. Then back. Yeah, 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 back and forth. Okay, right. but yeah. So there, there's that in there. There's in that mix in there. So I'd like to see a Peter Yan. I've Cor uh, Corey Sanhagen's a great fight for him. Um, I'd like to see that fight as well. Corey's good on the ground. Corey's fucking nasty on the feet, and uh, and he's a, he's a. I don't know if you guys watch him on his uh, Instagram. He does a great job of getting into a fighter's psyche. If you guys follow him a little bit on social media, he does good little breakdowns talking about how if you leave yourself here, you put yourself here. He breaks down the psyche of the fighter and where he could go with the next shot or the next combination. I think he's probably, he's one of the best I've ever seen do it in terms of breaking it down very uh, methodically in terms of the stand-up. And I like what he does. So if you guys don't follow Corey Sanhagen, give him a holler. Check him out on, uh, on social media. Does great fight breakdown stuff. Awesome. Um, just tell him the punk sent you. Yeah, tell him the punk sent you. <laughs> but I feel the same way with Mokayev, and I feel the same way with uh, Umar. The problem with Umar, Umar just hasn't been as active. With the shoulder surgery, he would look like he was about to start being active. Then he had the shoulder surgery, and so now he's kind of like a little bit, I would say not a little bit behind, but he's he had the Corey he's behind, Sanhagen he's fight. Also, he's in that situation where, People don't look, everybody in that division knows he's good. Yeah, They all know he's good. Yeah. And so it's one of those, why am I going to fight him now? You, you get into it many times as a fighter, you're going to pick someone that you know is good. You know how good they are, and you're going to pick them early to try to catch them before they actually gain that skill level that all of a sudden can put them over the top even against you. So you're going to catch them early that way, and your manager will tell you, well, hey, let's catch them early. That way we get out of the way for a couple of years while this guy continues to get good. Yep. We've already beaten him. Nope. Some of them don't want to lose their their uh their O or some of them just don't want to lose to him while they're still young. I think it's best but, to try to get it out of the way cuz then you end up with like a uh Armand Sarukian lost to Islam as yeah. his first fight, but guess what? He just now as Islam got better, he understood how good he was and he just progressively got better and now look at him. You know, he's yeah, one fight away it. from fighting for the title. But if I mean if you if you're looking and you're one of those top guys in the 135, do you want to fight Umar? That's one of those. I, eh. I mean, honestly, I would try to snatch him when, up now. When I have to, okay. But it's not that's not a fight I'm looking forward to. It's, he's that good. He can beat anybody in there. So, yeah. yeah. I think him and, and his Cor brother, him and Corey, be good. Or if Peter wins, I'd like to see him and Peter Yawn fight. Those two guys yeah. would be great fights for him. 
Not bad. <clears throat> All right, we had Eric Anders against Jamie Pickett. You were you talked about Jamie. It was just one of those Jamie waited. Yeah. He was waiting, waiting, waiting. And you you can't wait in a fight. You got to go. Uh, Anders just had a had a more volume, uh, more pressure in his attack, and Jamie Pickett at times is just waiting for like the one shot to see if he can land the one shot. Doesn't land it. Ends up getting taken down, and then it's the fight to get up. You know, and, and look, he's got. He's actually got a good ground game. You know, his jujitsu coach is Salter. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not like he doesn't roll with good people. Mm-hmm. He does. It's just that he's not going to end up, you know, getting someone like a, uh, an athlete like Anders unless Anders makes some big mistakes. So, you know, nice decision to, to you know what, say I've had enough. Yeah. Congratulations on your career, Jamie Pickett. Nice win, Eric Anders. But it's – uh. It's one of those Eric Anders almost sounds like he's thinking about how much longer he's 36 years of age. Yeah. He said he had what th- three more fights on his contract. You know, he'll fight those out, but you know, those three fights might put him to the point where he's 37 years of age. So, yeah, I look, I, it's, it's that addiction, right? He got the win. If he would have lost, would he have retired too? Would Jamie Pickett have retired? Had he got the win? Probably not. Like that's it's we <laughs> talked about this the other day with Tony Ferguson. And I was like, gosh, Dana would just give him one win, let him get his win, and then but he won't. But He's he gonna can't. ride it till the wheels fall off, even though the wheels are already off. He's gonna ride it. And it's sad because you'd like I'd like the fighters to leave on, you know, on a on a positive note. But it's addiction it's a it's an uh, an addiction. It's an addiction. It's yeah. fighting is. I can, I've always said this. I believe that all athletes are addicts. You no, would never be a professional athlete if you weren't a, if you weren't an addict. No, because you have to put so yeah. much into it, so much yep. time, so much effort. You have to be addicted to it because the average person is going to go, that's enough. You can't say that. No. You've always got to put in more. I I just saw a thing with they they just showed this tape of Tom Brady. I don't know if you saw this. Running his yes. 40 <laughs> Did you, did you see that? <laughs> that was okay, so now hold great. on. When you think you think about That's this, great. he is 21 years of age running his 40-yard dash in the NFL Combine. Mm-hmm. And at the age of 46, he runs it fast. Yes. Okay, how does that happen? Take care of yourself. Yep. Yeah. That's That's by doing all the things – that need to be done to make yourself better and better in every way. And yeah. that's what he did. And so you look and you go, that's what it Pe- takes, but he's a dick. People knocked him because like he was doing some long gating of the muscle and yo- and like not yoga, but like different types of like uh muscle stretching to make sure that the muscle stayed long gated. They didn't start to like get tensed up, looking more muscular, which gave him a little bit more flexibility and movement in his shoulders and his arms. Most of us just lift weights to lift weights to kind of look the part. He's like, no, I needed to have useful muscle. I need to have functional muscle to move, throw the ball, have my flexibility in my shoulder to cock it back and get it down the field. He took a very scientific approach on it, and uh, and he played until he was 45. It's fucking insane, right? He, and Crazy. think about that. Five more years of making $30, $40 million a year. <laughs> if you yeah, just take hurting. care of yourself. He's hurting. Yeah, but I'm saying like these guys, right? The fighters, you can't do that. It doesn't matter how, like it does matter how well you take care of yourself. You can fight yeah, later. You can fight longer. You can fight later. But let's just be honest. Your brain just can't take the shots. Like, But it's the, okay, but it's the one thing. And we were talking about this with like Volkanovsky. We we're saying, hey, you've got to let your head rest. He's doing it. He came out and said, I, I'm going to let my head, you know, head rest. And it's like, way to go. You know, he's listening to his coach yeah. and he's realizing, hey, you're not no one is invincible no. and the more that you damage your vehicle and your body is your is the vehicle and you don't take care of it and fix it so it gets back to where it can be that sports car that you know it is you're going to get the same results and so it's nice to hear him say you know i'm going to take some time off that's what we're talking about yeah being smart. if i could go back I would spar with Frank Shamrock, Paul Bonatello, Mike Kyle, Trevor Prangley, Phil Baroni, John Fitch, That's Josh the dumbest Kostchuk. thing ever. I sparred with all those guys. You're an idiot. Luke Rockhold. I sparred with all of them. All of them. 
Didn't matter. Frank yeah. Shamrock. Frank Shamrock was one of my first sparring partners. Sparring. Yeah, but Frank was okay to, to, to spar. Yeah, no power. Yeah, you know, power. Exactly. But he was dirty and nasty all the time. He'd elbow you in the spine. <laughs> He'd fucking headbutt you. And he just did shit to, you know. Um, if I could go back and change anything about my career is I would do things. I wouldn't do things like that. I would, I would not spar with Paul Bonatello. I would not spar with, you know, Mike Kyle and Trevor Prangley and, you know, with Phil Baroni, it was different because I knew what my objective was never to really stand with them. It was just to wrestle them. That was it. Like with Trevor and those guys, like trying to take those guys down, you know, Paul, you could try to take it down. All you do is single leg treetop him because he had no balance, you know, but certain guys, you could get away with things. But this guy's like, think about, spar I sparred so much with Josh Koscheck, so much. No chance of me taking him down. <laughs> <laughs> not what not not no chance whatsoever no, no chance no chance josh was all. one like and he gets the biggest in the and he gets the worst rap probably out of anyone out of ak but man that guy worked with me so much he deserved the worst rap he, okay because not in my not wait, in my on. eyes hold on i understand what you're yes. saying and i'm telling you right now i knew josh and i think josh was a good guy he was a fantastic guy but he didn't care that people didn't like him and i and love that about him. and he actually made it to where he goes you know, someone to say something, you go, fuck you. Yeah. And he, Josh was just, hey, you don't like me? I don't give a yeah. shit. Yeah. He would say, you know, when people say they don't like you, ask yourself why you give a fuck. Okay. You don't. That's the truth. And I'm like, I was, like I said, he lived with me for a while too. And he was just a great guy, man. I enjoyed having him around. He's probably one of the best roommates I had. You know? He is a hell of an athlete. He was a hell of an athlete. Hell of an athlete. Guy, that guy never stopped working out. Never. He was always working out, whether it was lifting, whether it was running, whether it was jogging. And he just he just did everything on his own. Like he was Mr. For me, he was Mr. Low Maintenance. So, you know, I've, I've had people talk about how high maintenance he was. I'm like, what are you talking about? The guy who did everything on his own. I never you never had to cater to him. You know, yeah. uh, he was a little bossy, though, when it came to being a trainer for him. Like, I remember like him yelling at Javier and other guys like, hey, when we said 630, that means down here in the ring at 630, not fucking watch me warm up from up there. No, no, you come down here and, and you watch me. You said my time is 630, be down here to hold mitts at 630. And I, I got to be honest, <laughs> I can respect that. We're on a schedule. I'm a, I'm a fucking him true professional. Him and Javier had a special relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so weird, right? So weird. Uh, well. All right, but hey, before we carry on with the rest of the card and uh, move on to some news, uh, go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In, OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off this month. I'm going to probably try to do one live a week. And then I'm also going to download this this thing to Big John's phone so he can just jump on and do some live comments for you guys yeah. about go ahead. With, the, uh, with, the, um, with refereeing or fights that you guys want to talk about. You know, we normally, I normally do it between 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, I usually do it probably like right around the uh, like times right before I either go pick up my kids from school or do whatever, but it gives me about 30, 40 minutes of downtime and uh, it's a good time to jump on. I may try to do one in the evening this week, which might be good. Kind of like right, right when you guys start to go to bed, most of you guys are probably scrolling through your OnlyFans pages around that time. And so <laughs> go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and hit us up. Now, I know I had some more people in the comments talking about, oh, well, I can't believe you guys are working with them. I can't believe this. Look, there's like a whole sports unit on DJ. Demetrius Johnson's on there. Yep. He's, he's showing techniques and moves. I'm sorry, but DJ is probably the least perverted person I think I've ever met in my life. Okay. And <laughs> he's a great person. He's a family man. Obviously, his wife doesn't care. He's putting content on there. He's taking care of all of his stuff. He's doing, he's showing techniques, jujitsu moves, his striking techniques. He's on there. Demetrius Johnson, Luke Rockhold, probably showing pictures of his sexy body all over the place. Okay. That's what he's doing. But you've got other, you've got other fighters that are on there. You know, you've got uh, Chris Cyborg, you've got AJ McKee, you've got uh, Brent Primus, you've got other fighters that are all on there. And um, Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira is on there as well. And uh, I know they're they're signing a bunch of new fighters on the, in this market as well. So go ahead and check it out at OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. Subscribe to us over there. It is free, okay? If you guys don't follow any of the porn people, then they will not come up on your feed and your wife will have nothing to suspect. So that's all on you guys. Or nothing to complain nothing about. Nothing to complain about. Say, look, <laughs> here you go, babe. Here's my OnlyFans page. Check it out. That's it. Nothing to see. Nothing to see but just mine and John's beautiful face at OnlyFans.com slash Wayne In. You said that so, so that it was so with right. such conviction, with yeah, such exactly. conviction. Uh, all right, is that going to wrap up our, our our UFC talk? 
Let me see that card. Well, you, you know what? I, I want to go with a couple things real quick. First off, we talked about Vinicius Oliveira. Mm-hmm. Big, big. But Eamon Zahabi against Javid Basharat. Zahabi was a huge underdog in that fight. And I, I tell you what, fought a hell of a fight. Fought a countering fight, fought, you know, a smart fight, and he got the win. And I know Basharat did not feel like Did you he agree lost with that, that decision? I did. Okay. I did. I, I had Zahabi winning the, the last two. And uh I thought it was Basharat a lot of it giving it away, but he was just he was not getting the best of the exchanges. Yeah. You know, and when Zahab Zahabi proves that you weren't gonna take me down, he kind of seemed to get a little bit lost. Yeah. But I, I Really, a great fight by Zahabi. And I, he, that is not an easy uh, opponent to go against. I want to say the same thing with uh, Ludwig Klein. Boy, I tell you what, AJ Cunningham was tough as hell, man. He took some big yeah, shots. Yeah, he did. Some big shots, Josh. It just kept coming. And eventually, the, 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 the body shot, the teep kick to the body yep. just put him down. Don't blame him. Really a tough performance. And then I was going off of the, the size of the first two lightweights yep. and the, how much musk, just the muscle on both of them. I mean, unbelievable. You'd look at the backs yeah. and how deep. And it was like, Jesus Christ, how are you carrying that much weight and making 155? Crazy. I have no clue. I had chicken legs, and then that's the only reason why I was able to make 55. But these guys now, I don't know, they're hollowing out their dicks or something. I don't know what it is because <laughs> it's nuts that these guys are making the weight. They're barrel chested. They got broad shoulders, got traps on traps. I mean, it's just like it goes shoulder Rad- to ear for some of these guys. Razabov's laps were just unbelievable. I'm like, I- I'm like, how are you? Ca- how, how are, are you, you getting? How are you getting to this weight? I- I- it baffles me. And I, I've, yeah. I've said this a couple of times on the show, but I fought Eves Edwards and Joe goes, man, yeah. Josh Thompson's one of the, the, probably the biggest lightweight I've ever seen in my life. I, I gotta be honest, 45 pounders walk around my size. Now oh, I walked man. up to Jeremy Kennedy, who we're going to talk about in this. Jeremy story. Kennedy is bigger than he's you. Enormous. So is Bre- Brendan Lockney. We did a thing with Brendan Lockney. Uh, we did a th- I go, dude, he's a feather. I can't believe it. <laughs> I stood next to both of these guys, and they're both bigger than me. They're both taller than me, and they're both, well, I don't know if Jeremy Kennedy's taller than me, but I know that Lochnane is a little bit taller than me. Everyone's taller. You than shut me. your Let's whore mouth. <laughs> but, John, I got to give, I got to, like, Klein's going to be good. He's going to be tough. He's going to be good. He was on point, stayed on point with his, his striking. Yeah. He mixed Looked everything good. up really well. And what I liked about Klein is at the end of a lot of combinations, he threw the head kick. Yep. I love that. Because a lot of fighters get complacent out there after they throw the boxing. They think it's a sparring match and nothing's going to come dangerously towards their head. And Klein was letting that head kick go. That makes him stay loyal to the combinations, which opens up the push kick to the body after you throw the head kick. Very, very well done by Klein. Klein. Uh, but I got to be honest, the Oliveira and the Sopai fight. Yep. <sighs> hands down, fight of the night. Hands down, great oh my fight. God. What a knockout at the end. A awesome knockout. Holy, holy Jesus. This is what, okay, for everyone out there, when we, you'll hear us at times complaining about, hey, look, don't leave anything there. You know, if you're doing a backflip off of the you know cage at the end and you, it's a decision, you didn't put everything that you had out to win that fight to show everyone. This is what we're talking about. Both those guys were exhausted at times in this fight. Both of them sucked it up. Both of them got hurt. Both of them sucked it up. But at the end, when you see Vinicius Oliveira going after him, he didn't have to run after him and throw that. He's trying to finish him. And that's what your promoters want to see. That's what the fans want to see. And that's what will make me go and say, oh, Vinicius Oliveira, I'm going to watch that fight. Because... He proved to me he tries yeah. to finish fights. Great job. Yeah, I mean he he started off early with the late the calf kicks and they played they paid dividends as the fight went on. And I looked like that Sopai was having success with the leg kicks also. It's just who got to it later on throughout the fight yeah. and who kept going to the well. You got to keep going to it. And some fighters they start doing it and they get away from it. And it was working for them. And so I just Oliveira though looked like he was gassing out, looked like he was slowing down. Yep. And the fight was a, oh, I thought he was going to lose. I it was a good fight. 
was back and forth. Both had taken some big shots. So probably just seemed like when he got tired, he shut down. Whereas Oliver, when he got tired, he kept trying. He kept trying to try to get the finish. He kept standing right in front of him going, hey, if I want to go, I'm going to go out on my shield. Where so probably just started to sort of kind of stake step backwards, started to come into the pressure and folding, kind of breaking mentally. Well, you got to you got to go back to that second round. Sopai was putting it. Yes, on he was. Oliveira throughout the beginning of the you know half of the that second round, the first half, and that kid turned it around. Yeah. And at the end of it, he was putting it on Sopai. And you went, man, what a performance! Because I thought you were going to be out of that fight, and you just came back and actually took the round, and just put on a hell of a performance in that round. So. I mean, very impressive. It was like that one time when John fell on me inside the cage. I was about to turn it around, and then the bell rang. Oh, is he that was what saved. you were going to do? He was saved by the bell. <laughs> I have the video footage somewhere. I just got to research it. I'm going to find out where it is. I got the video footage. I was about to sweep him please, and get to the top position please. and save by the oh, bell. Oh, did, Big did John you just was say you were going to sweep Easiest me? sweep ever. Deep half? Have you ever tried just rolling a ball? It just rolls right over. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, hey, we got some news for you guys, though. We've got a couple fight announcements and some big fight announcements. You got Patricio Ferreira, Pitbull, is fighting Jeremy Kennedy, who we just talked about, who's a massive 145 pounder and uh, trains out of Extreme Couture and he Ooh. trains with our boy, Eric Nixick. And uh, Eric's got a bunch of great things to say about him. Oh. Patricio fight was canceled when he was over in Saudi Arabia. He was originally um, multiple times. Not multiple times. This is very yeah. true. Um, fight was canceled with Pinedo, then it was canceled with Braga. You know, he just couldn't get anyone to stay in the fight. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little rebuttal to that. Is that Aaron okay. Pico asked for that fight? Oh yeah, I, I know that, and it wasn't accepted. And so, from what I understand, it wasn't accepted. I was told it wasn't accepted, but Braga took the fight, and Braga was put in a situation. This it was fight week. His dad has been, his dad was killed, and so. That was a lot of pressure. He was fine, from what I understand, from Braga. He was fine in camp. It wasn't until he got there during fight week, and the week that you spend the most time in your room with your dad, yeah. talking about game plan, going with over warm-ups. His, his dad was a trainer yeah. for him, too. And so just was. being there, just understanding, like, I understood what Braga, I felt what Braga was going through. Yeah. I Hold on. We had talked about it, yeah. and I said, I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm really surprised yeah. that he's he's going to be there to fight. And in the end, he couldn't. And then, look, I understand. No, I get it. I understand. It's a tough one. Uh, but Patricio Pitbull versus uh, Jerry Kennedy. I, I think we're seeing a changing of the guard here, John. Ooh. I think. Ooh. And, Ooh. and I think as long as Jeremy Kennedy fights a smart fight, uses his size, his weight, wrestles him, controls him, He's got to be careful with the army and guillotine. He's got to be careful with the guillotines. He's got to be careful of those yep. type of positions. And uh, I think he's got the, I think he's got a little bit of the advantage. He is a big, big guy for 145 pounds. Jeremy Kennedy yes, is. He is. And Patricio, yeah. I don't think, to be honest, had the fight with uh, Sergio Pettis where he cut down to 135. Then he fought in Japan and like literally at a week's notice at 155. No, no, no. So, two days. Sorry. Two days notice. So two days notice. Two days notice. He took the yeah. fight in Japan. First suffered his first knockout loss of his career after losing to Sergio Pettis, where he got rocked in that fight as well. Two losses in a row, one of them being the first knockout loss of his career. Now this, with all the ups and downs of whether he's fighting or not. Plus surgery. Plus surgery on his neck. He had neck surgery after the knockout loss in Japan. Now, all of that stuff being said, I looked at him step on the scale in, in Saudi Arabia. He doesn't look like he has put the muscle back on like he had before he cut to 135. And I can understand why. He went through the loss, then he took that time off of the next surgery, and he hasn't had the real amount of time to put all of his weight back on properly, like as if he'd been training for a year straight. I, I, the reason why I give you guys this example is I fought Kid Yamamoto. I took the fight on two weeks' notice. I fought him at 143 pounds in Hawaii. On In that camp, in a two week notice, I cut Just from. Say I killed myself. I killed myself. I cut down from 170, 169, all the way down to 143 pounds in two weeks. I got there. I fought. It took me, I kid you not, a month of eating and training and lifting to yeah, get but my weight. It only weight. took you one minute to kick him in the nuts. Yeah, and that was the greatest minute of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest minute of my life. It went to the second round. 
I know. He went to the second one. <laughs> and he took he took it right to the fucking dome, right to the cup. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. yeah. It was good. It, Not a good one. I got signed of the UFC off that performance. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're you're right about uh like I love Patricio and uh but there's so many things that you're looking at. And this is what happens, you know, with fighters and, and f- Patricio's in that position where he's got to get up all the time for these guys. They're up for him. And Jeremy Kennedy can wrestle. And no doubt that Patricio could knock him out. He's got the power to knock anybody in the, in the featherweight division out with, you know, one shot. He's got that kind of power in his hands. But Jeremy's not going to stick on the outside with him. He's not going to sit there and play his game. He's going to take his time moving in and out. And when he gets the opportunity, he's going to come in and shoot. He'll put him to the cage. He'll use body locks. He'll go for double legs. He'll go for single legs. He's going to mix it up. And he's going to get to the top position. And I know that uh, Patricio has got you know good jujitsu. It's not good enough to submit Jeremy Kennedy. Outside of the army and guillotine, he's doing. that's it. Yeah. That's outside yeah, of the army. He gets his head caught. He gets his head caught on the inside <laughs> on a takedown. That's the one. And Patricio's great at mm-hmm. locking it up quick. But once it hits the ground, I really don't see Patricio having a good uh, attack against Jeremy uh, from the bottom. So he's going to have to stop those takedowns mm-hmm. and use his hands to make it to where Jeremy Kennedy does not want to get inside. You know, I think this is a you know a great matchup that they put together for the Belfast card. You already have you know Corey Anderson on it going up against Carl Moore, which is a good fight. But this one is a really good quality featherweight matchup. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll try and give it. A, we'll try and cover that fight card. We'll see exactly where they end up on TV. So yeah, I see. don't know. I don't know either. Okay. <laughs> um. But John, like I look at that fight with Jeremy Kennedy and with Patricio, if you if people don't believe in Jeremy Kennedy's wrestling, when he fought Aaron Pico, he went right to wrestling. Yeah, he was like, I don't care how good. Which be, tells uh, you, yes, I mean, dude, this is MMA. Yeah. This is not a. This is not freestyle wrestling no. for the Olympics. I can handle you in MMA yeah. wrestling, and that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put you on your back. And look at it was, he was on top of Aaron Pico. Now, there was the separation of the shoulder that occurred, you know, when Aaron threw it. But I don't think Jeremy Kennedy knew that for a long time throughout that first round. I think eventually he did. Mm-hmm. But he didn't know for a lot of it. And he was just working. It's gonna, did a good job. It's going to be a good fight. I'm looking forward to it. And I think the winner of that's going to end up fighting Aaron Pico. I think the winner of that will be next fight, Aaron Pico. And there's yeah. a story there. There's a story there for the Jeremy Kennedy fight. For both. And there's a story there, a little bit of a story there for Patricio and with uh, Pico. Yeah. So it makes Well, there's definitely the story of if Jeremy ends up taking the title yeah. from Patricio, there is a definite story there. Because, like I said, you know, they've they already fought once, mm-hmm. and it was Aaron who hurt himself, you know, just throwing a punch. Mm-hmm. You know, his shoulder popped out. He couldn't get it popped back in. He's had surgery to get it fixed. But Jeremy's got the win. Yeah. So We'll see. All right, next fight. We got bare knuckle boxing coming to you April 27th from Los Angeles, California. BKFC is putting on their first show in the state of California since they legalized bare knuckle fighting championships. And they have got the man who I think is gold for the BKFC. That is Mike Perry taking on Thiago Alves. Uh, Man, I love Thiago Alves. Loved him as a, as a MMA fighter in the UFC, you know, absolutely, you know, referee multiple fights of his, just a tough dude. Good in the standup. Perry is meant for bare knuckle fighting. Yeah. You, you want someone that was made for this. There's your guy. I would agree. I can't. I could not agree with you more. Uh, I did see Tiago out in Saudi Arabia. He looks fit. He looks trim. He was putting in some work on the mitts uh, with Mike Brown. He was doing the workouts. He knew. Yeah, he, he was doing the workouts <laughs> alongside the guys that were there with him from ATT. He was. He wasn't slacking, man. Saw him in the gym too, getting his miles in. He was a sweaty pig, and uh, he was ready to go, man. And he looks good. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight. 
Mike Perry is built for this. Anything can happen in these type of fights. Cuts can happen. I mean, break your hands. All these things can happen. Mike Perry oh, yeah. is built for this. Tiago Alves is a dog, though. He's a dog. He's been through it all. No, and he's exactly the kind of fighter yeah. that you look to say, you'll do well mm -hmm. in bare knuckles. Absolutely. Because because he is a dog yeah. and he'll stand and he'll bite down on his mouthpiece and he'll throw hands and look Matt, as far as size wise, they match up really well. You know, Alves used to fight at 170, uh -huh. you know, and he was 200 pounds easily. <laughs> easily. Was like, damn dude. I mean, I used to walk, I used to walk out like in the, in the Vegas casinos. I'd see him walking. I'd be looking at him from behind through the casino. I'm like, good God, that guy's probably like 220. I mean, yeah. I know he wasn't 220, but he was a good 205, 200, 205 oh, yeah. easily. You know, and just, just the way his, you can see right here in his picture, his his fucking traps go up to his earlobes. It's just, yeah. it goes right from earlobe to shoulder. There's no, there's really no neck. And so, um, you know, as long as he comes in shape, he's a dog. He's, he's going to be bringing it. I just feel like when I talk about fighters going into a new promotion, it doesn't feel like home. Well, Mike Perry's made this feel like home from the get. And so oh, any, any fighter yeah, that no comes doubt. there, he's like, he's already got the upper, the upper hand because he's like, this is my house. This is what I do. I, this is, I've built this shit. Not, not only is it his house, he's the star child, man. Absolutely. He's the golden child yeah. there. So. Uh, all right. Well, hey, guys, that's going to wrap up our show for today. Go to WayneAndMerch.com, WayneAndMerch.com, and pick up some of our short sleeves, long sleeves, hoodies, all those things available there. But, guys, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button uh, on our, our main channel there and uh, hit the little bell and the notifications. we got some special shows dropping for you guys in the next couple weeks. You guys don't want to miss out on dropping some more content. If you guys haven't watched our content from last week, we had a lot of content that dropped uh, last week, we had about seven shows, I think, six or seven extra shows that dropped on our main channel. Making Dave work. Making da That's not making Dave work. Let's calm down. Podcast okay. Dave is working his to, to the bone. I know John, how hard you're working, John, Dave. Please, please. <laughs> Let's calm it down now. Let's calm it down. <laughs> I will refrain from comment. Yes. That's a first. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so, let's salvage our listeners' ears from your comments. Oh. Uh, All right. Well, hey, guys, we want to thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Continue to subscribe. Just comment down below if there's any topics you guys would like us to talk about. Comments down below. And uh, we will try to get on those topics as well. And anything that in the future, it's not so much a Q&A. Give us some topics that you guys would like us to talk about, and we'll go ahead and get into that. Give us a good 8 to 20-minute long video that we can break down and talk about a fight. Uh, Dana White stuff, the uh, class action lawsuit, the refereeing stuff, whatever it is. Real changes, you know, if Bare Knuckle is ever going to come to Vegas or not. I mean, those are things that maybe we could talk about here soon. So, <laughs> all right, guys, I want to just uh, say thank you guys again so much. Write your comment down below, and John, take us away, bud. For everyone out there, do me a favor. Go pick up some of our merch. It's good stuff. It looks good, and you're going to look fantastic go. in it. Right there. For everyone out there, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you.